The 6th Annual Midwest Peace of Liberty Fest will be held at the Circle Pine Center in Delton, Michigan, just outside of Kalamazoo, from Thursday, June 21st through Monday, June 25th. There will be all sorts of activities in a family and adult-friendly environment. Scheduled speakers include Dana Martin, Brett Vinat, Prof. CJ, and Scott Horton. Round up your friends and family members and get them registered today at mplfest.org. That's Mike, Papa, Lima, Fest. Dogs welcome. Longer wishes recommended. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Teens Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site go with agoristhosting.com Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Abolitionist Abstractions. As always, we are covered by a bit got no government license. This allows for use by anyone except governments, any agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at pipcot.org. All right, so I am back with an actual official episode. Last week's episode was kind of, uh, I kind of stole one of my vlogs and put the audio out for it because, well, I've been going crazy. And as everybody who knows who's been following me, I'm out in my vehicle and traveling around. So I'm trying to make stuff work on the road. But I was lucky enough to be able to schedule a guest today. And uh, I was actually luck- also lucky enough to be able to borrow a room in a local public library to be able to record. So joining me today, I have Anthony Samaroff from the Scottish Liberty Podcast and the author of the amazing book, Procrastination Annihilation, who we spoke to a couple of a week, a month ago or so on the Seeds of Liberty, but now I got him on my podcast. Anthony, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, man. I'm doing pretty good. Good to connect with you. It's been a little while. Um, you've certainly been through the mill this year. Um, we were going to meet in New York City when I was visiting, but unfortunately, due to your situation, that plan fell through. Um, yeah. Ha- yeah. Uh, how's, how are things going? Well, I mean, th- things are going. They're, uh, you know, this is uh, today starts the second week of me being out of, uh, you know, no longer a homeowner. I've been, mm. I've been on the road officially for a week. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been up and down. There's, uh, you know, it's a learning process. I'm recording a lot of content. I'm doing a lot of videos and stuff and uh, just trying to... Uh, Retaining your sanity. Well, yeah, that's part of it. Um, you know, like like we like we talked about, um, you know, the, the last time we spoke, uh, you, know, sp- you know, more specifically about your book and stuff and about like the ideas of like how to like get yourself out of these um, ruts or especially if you're a procrastinator, like routines are a good thing. And even if it's something small, even you know, even if it's just a little thing, as long as you get into a routine of doing it every day or what, every other day or whatever it is, it, you ha- you can build off of that. So that's what I've been trying to do. Like my goal was to get out and start doing. Uh, I wanted to start doing yoga first thing in the morning. That was going to be one of my routines. Unfortunately, the weather has just been horrible around here. <laughs> it'll be like beautiful when I first. All right. Wake. It'll be beautiful when I first wake up. By the time I, you know, go, go relieve myself for the first time in the morning, and then go take care of Mert, my dog, and make sure she goes out and goes to the bathroom and everything. Then all of a sudden the weather turns, and it's like, yeah, I don't want to be doing yoga outside in a, in a park in the freezing, you know, in, in the wind and the cold and the rain. <laughs> it's not very enjoyable. So, um, but yeah. Uh, you know, like, like you said, uh, we, we were supposed to meet. It was very unfortunate that we couldn't uh, because, yeah, everything everything went to hell in a handbasket for me. But like I said, they're getting better. But, uh, you know, I, I was actually very jealous of you, of course, because, I mean, not only did I not get the chance to meet you in person, which I was looking forward to, but then, of course, on your last night, you just got a, like, basically a last-minute invite. It's like Tom Woods is like, oh, I'm in town. Oh, you're in town? Hey, let's go have dinner. So you actually got to have, sit yeah. and have dinner with Tom Woods. Please tell me, what was that, what was that like, man? Um, I don't mean to seem blasé, but it was very natural. Do you know what I mean? Uh, we just had uh, 
nice meal. I brought my friend David along, who I was staying with. David, even though he's a libertarian, he's a passive libertarian, and that he didn't even know he was a libertarian until I started talking politics with him, and it all became too clear that uh, he'd found his, he found what he was. Uh, he knew that he didn't like the social justice warriors and the whining left of Scotland. One of the reasons why he left, he thought the culture here is really negative compared to in the USA. And um, so that was quite interesting for him because obviously he didn't have any uh, preconceived notions of Tom Woods. Tom Woods was just a guy that I knew to, to, to him that uh, he knew that Tom Woods had a show and things like that, but he could ask him more objective questions like, oh, so when, wh which of your books is your favorite? Like just uh, uh, about his books and things like that, not from a biased perspective, but from a guy meeting an author. Uh, whereas for me and you know, I've been on the Tom Woods show three times for my sins. No, just kidding. Uh, my luck, uh, good luck or good hustle, you decide. Um, and so we'd sp spoken before and exchanged a couple of emails. And I was lucky, I guess. He, I posted on the Tom Woods group, uh, I, I chuck Tom Woods 60 bucks a year. It's not exactly the earth uh, <laughs> to, because uh, cause I've benefited from his show. And uh, as a consequence, I'm a member of his private members group. And I posted in there that I was going to be in New York City. And if anyone wanted to meet up, uh, they should let me know. And he messaged me thinking that I will have already left New York because um, it was quite a while earlier that I'd posted. And of course, it was just... It, uh, it was the day before I left that we we met. We met for about an hour, an hour and a half. Had something to eat. Had a chin wag, just just like this, Jeremy. Do you know what I mean? Just like us talking about things. Talked a little bit about politics. Talked a little bit about our own lives and what was going on. Had a little bit of a laugh. And uh, I guess I walked him most of the way to show. He was going to see a musician, someone from the band. Darn it! What are they called? So, you know, I'm even talking like Tom Woods. Darn, it's the kind of thing Tom Woods would say. Uh, um, well, uh, it's one of his prog bands, one oh, of the more gonna, contemporary yeah, prog, prog bands. That's what I was going to say. Uh, if, it's, if it's Tom Woods, it's definitely going to be prog music. So. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's that um, more recent prog band. One of their albums was called Fear of a Black Nation or something like that. I can't uh, really remember. I, I do know the one you're talking about, but the name's escaping me too. I, uh, I, I only know it from listening to him because I mean, I've I, like you. I mean, I've been a fan of his forever as well. So, um, but yeah, that's. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was very, very natural, very natural conversation. Well, yeah, because like you said, you guys have had. You know, he's he has. I mean, Tom, at least for, for from what I know from listening to him for all these years, you know, he's somebody that he doesn't ask you back a second time unless he really likes you. And the fact that he asked you mm. back three, he has asked you back, uh, you know, for a third time already, and I'm sure he'll be on again. Uh, obviously, you guys have built up a, a decent little rapport there. So yeah, that's. I mean, that's that, that was really cool, man. I mean, obviously, when uh, <laughs> I woke up the next morning and you had sent a bunch of us the picture. Um, you, you, you had messaged All right. me. I, was like, the first, I woke up, that was like one of the first things I saw when I clicked on Facebook and my first reaction was I'm like, you motherfucker. I'm like, right. I'm like, I couldn't get out to see you. I was all bummed and now you're sitting there having dinner. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit of a shame, but it's, it's the weird thing, you know, that I don't know if this is in the Bible, but it's kind of like uh, the, um, well, the one in the Bible is there's a quote that's like, Oh crap! I can't remember it, but it, it's it's totally unfair. It's like to those who have um, more will be given, and or and I can't believe I've forgotten the quote. It's a, it's one of the good ones, but other people put it a different way, which is the hungry don't get fed, which seems like the mo uh, the most unfair philosophy ever. But it's really weird. I think it tends to be like when you're just kind of blasé about things, things come your way. It's like if you're the kind of person that's like. Oh my God, Tom Woods! Like <laughs> you're probably never going to end up having uh, dinner with whoever it is that you consider um, to be a hero. But if you're just like, yeah, I'm just doing my little libertarian thing here, like putting out my content, doing my thing, a little bit of hustling. Uh, oh, that's pre pretty cool. I'm in New York, and Tom Woods is in New York at the same time, and I'm going to meet him for lunch tomorrow. Well, that's kind of fucking weird, and also kind of fucking cool. Um, <laughs> but it's not, do you, you know what I mean? Uh, it's interesting, though, because I remember that, you know, even the year before 
my first Tom Woods appearance, I used to say to my flatmate, oh, it would be so cool if I go could go on Tom Woods' show one one day. That would be, like, awesome. And he was like, yeah, that would be awesome. And then next thing, I, I basically went on the show about three times in, I think, just under a year, which is, like, or just over a year. It's pretty incredible, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I, I definitely, I've heard you a bunch there because, like I said, I mean, I've been a regular listener since, since the day he mm. started. And it's funny, you know, you were mentioning his, uh, you know, his secret group he has for his uh, for the supporting listeners. And of course, he started that after I stopped being a supporting listener. And that was only because I was oh. I was it wasn't because I didn't want to keep supporting him because I was I was one of the first people to sign mm-hmm. up originally when he started that program. Because <laughs> uh, like, you oh, know, you must be kicking. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. But but like you, I was, uh, you know, I, like I said, I was a big fan of his for years. Um, the, mm-hmm. well, the one thing I actually have always um, and one of these days I will get I, I've tried to set up interviews with him before, but um, I. I think he, I think he was a little uh, miffed at uh, the way my co-host handled some things years ago, and he kind of turned us down because of that. But um, I, I mean, I've been following him for years, and I actually, you know, talk about missed opportunities. Um, I had the opportunity to go to this the, the little school that he was when he was still actually a, a professor. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the opportunity to go to the school that he was teaching at, and I had no idea. And it just as as luck would have it, I ended up not going. That's mm. I started. I I dropped out of school and started my my pet sitting business mm. instead but then i found out years later i'm like man if i had stuck through school i would have, i could have had tom woods as my history oh, that's annoying that would have been uh, that would have been fantastic yeah uh, uh, there's so many things like that i mean we were fans of jordan peterson before he blew up and we just never bothered to email him to ask him to come on scottish liberty podcast even though he was one of uh, tom my co-hosts on scottish liberty podcasts um favorite uh thinkers at the time uh, we just never reached out. I guess we thought we had all time. There's, yeah. uh, and then he blew up, and now it's too late. But we would have had that. You know, we've had other people on that have got bigger. We we even discussed having them back, and um, now their schedules are full. So. Well, yeah. Well, well, you're you know it's, you're it's, starting to become like that, man. I mean, I, that's why I was so lucky. I was glad that you were you know you were able to set up some time for me because you're 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 blowing up over there yourself. I mean, I hear you. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I mean, now especially right. now now that I'm out in my vehicle and I have a lot more time to kill because I'm by my you know just me and my dog a lot of the times. Uh, I can listen to even more than I was before. But even before that, I've 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 listened to you know I listen to four to six hours of podcast a day when I was doing my dog wow. business. Just well, you know, you're out walking around with dogs and you got nobody to talk to what else you got to do double double speed or regular speed uh i i now listen at one and a half speed yeah Uh, but for years i listened at regular speed because i was so (laughs) stubborn that even though i hated stitcher because it always get the podcast (laughs) uh app it always gave me problems. I, I just never got around to changing it. And that they, right. they didn't give you the option on the version that I had. So for years, I listened to hours and hours of podcasts at regular speed. <laughs> now I listen well, to I mean, that's one good. and a half. I know. I love how you laugh at that as though, I mean, imagine listening to a podcast at regular speed. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> like, yeah, I think it's, if it's really important, 1.25 is pretty good. But you get used to listening to things. Also, there's so many people making such great content at the moment that it's kind of like it's like you want to get as much in as you can sometimes but I guess I don't know if that means if I'm blowing up or I'm just a complete and utter libertarian podcast whore (laughs) and I've just been uh, I've just been doing the rounds hashtag why not both Um. (laughs) yeah I mean could be both I've been on everything I know pretty much well that's that's what I was saying like you know like I said I I listen to a bunch and you just keep popping up on all of them I think I I heard you on Mance you you were on Mance's show right Mance Raider yeah that's right I heard you on uh, Kyle uh, what's his name last name Anzalone, the guy who does the uh, yeah. um, foreign policy focus, which has actually become one of my favorite. Yeah, podcasts. good show. Oh yeah, that's I actually I want to. I've, I've been meaning to reach out to Kyle and uh, what's the guy he has on all the time? Will Porter. Um, I want. I yeah, want to reach well, out to both of them because okay. uh, I, I, those guys are like I, I live like. I used to not, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I ignored foreign policy for the longest time. I could like care less. Yeah. And now I've become well, obsessed with it between listening to Scott Horton and now listening to these guys. Like that's like one of my main focuses now though. Like, that's what I like to focus on. Um, yeah. I can't really retain facts on foreign policy anymore. When I was in school, uh, obviously Iraq and Afghanistan happened and it was big on researching of course it was harder to remember facts back it was harder to get a hold of facts back then because uh, podcasts and youtube hadn't really come alive yet so 
but I was doing my research and I, I argued the facts. But as things went on, I got battle weary of all the... Um, and like now I just feel like occasionally we do cover the foreign policy headlines on Scottish Liberty podcast but usually when we feel like we've got something to say if I was going to cover it on the show we'd get someone like Kyle or Will Porter or Scott Horton on I mean they're good Uh, Kyle's doing a great job of covering foreign policy you know he's doing it he's doing it and also the Ron Paul Liberty report also does a good job of uh, yeah, so yeah, I always forget yeah, that one's if, out there. <laughs> if, go, continue, continue with you. Preach, brother. <laughs> no, but like I said, I, 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 yeah, well, I was saying the the Ron Paul report. I always forget that's out there. But yeah, mm. Kyle's show. I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, and uh, my uh, another buddy of my, you know, talking about how everybody has a podcast these days. Uh, my my buddy Merrick Van Landingham has a podcast mm. which has been on hiatus for a while, but it was actually mm. um, becoming very popular, and I really wish he would bring it back called Radical Logic. And uh, right. him and I have, you know, worked together over the years. We've done a bunch of shows together, and we actually had a plan. We were going to do a like a like a hardcore foreign policy um, a, a series of episodes for either we were going to do a joint, you know, his podcast, my cast, mm-hmm. uh, my podcast. We we're going to do a joint project. And uh, we just sat down and started reading stuff. And then, like when Scott Horton's book came out, I sat there and listened to the audio book twice. And I'm like, uh, just pouring all this information in my head. At the end of the day, we just kind of looked at each other. It's like. Yo, these guys do it so much better than us. Why are we even bothering? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I think we need to, yeah, kind of like niche down a little bit. And I, I, I'm always trying to find a new angle to. I want to contribute something over and above what's out there when I when we do Scottish Liberty podcast. And I don't prefer the top the episodes where we do kind of topic de jour stuff like i just put out one or at least it's out on youtube i'm just editing uh i'm editing it down for For itunes okay uh, called the psychology of statism but i'm really proud of it um it just went out today actually and it will go out on itunes later i'm doing a little bit of editing for itunes because i want it to be a little bit more tight um, it's not something I usually do too much of, but also I think it's something that I'll be pointing people towards. So I guess there's a little bit of that, and um, I, that that one I thought was quite a quite a different one. I like a presentation I did called uh, "Public versus Private: Why uh, Why Do Markets Work?" Um, like, and we we have had like topics that are more evergreen. I like. The stuff on libertarian philosophy, economics and stuff like that. Politics is kind of a flash in the pan and we do it sometimes and it's good bait to get people in into it, but it's principles and I think, yeah. I don't know, it's like there's, there's so many people creating content right now, you have to give people a, a reason to listen. I mean, even though we can listen on 1.5 or 2 times speed, our, our time is still limited. Um so oh, of course and and yeah like you said i mean the, the the market is kind of flooded i mean right i i, I continue doing this just because i've been at it for a few years now so when it wasn't as flooded three or four years ago when we got started no it wasn't when we got started um so that's why i keep hanging on but i mean i i enjoy doing this because i i get to t- i also get to talk to you know interesting people sure like yourself and uh, unfortunately, as much as I would love to just sit down and like have phone conversations with the people, it just ne- we it, you know scheduling we can never work that out. So it just seems like the, right. the best way to be able to do that is to schedule. Okay, let's schedule a podcast, and we'll do it that way. Right, um, right. You know. More bang for your buck, right? Exactly. And then uh, you know you get to, you get to, you get to talk you get to talk to your friends, and you also and you also get to put out content and uh, help each other out that way. But uh, yeah, I actually the uh, the one the one you mentioned that you put out today, I haven't got to watch that yet. You did send it to me. I, I mentioned that I, I needed to get near Wi Fi because I, I so I could watch. Oh it yeah, YouTube. sure. But, of uh, I did watch the first couple of minutes of it, and I, I have it queued up, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna watch it later tonight. Yeah, uh, you won't be disappointed. I'm usually well, I I haven't I don't think I've I I, I can I'm, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your rear end or anything, but I can honestly say I don't think I've ever been disappointed by anything I've heard you put out. So I'm I'm sure I will enjoy it. Uh, 
you definitely, uh, you know, I, I, I love what you do. And obviously, you know, as we've talked before, you know, your book has already had like a huge impact on me. <laughs> and uh, Wow, that's really kind of you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you saying it. I mean, you never, you never know what it's doing out there until someone says that they've benefited from it. And uh, going on your show to talk about it was one of my one of my favorite ones. Like I, I did a lot of podcasts on it, uh, talking about that book, and I, I remember that I just really enjoyed you and you guys, and we had a good. Yeah, uh, I felt like it was a very authentic conversation as well. Well, yeah, I mean, it, well, and that's only, and, and that's specifically because, you know, my other co-hosts weren't there. It was just Shane, I, Shane and I, if, if Dave had been there, he probably would have ruined everything. But I knew, but, but you know, because Dave never reads the books I ask him to. But Shane and I had both read your book and both loved it. So it wasn't like we were just like, oh, you know, like anybody else who just says, oh, and let me ask you this question about the book. And this question is like, no, I, I read the darn book. It, it hit home for me. Yeah. Let's talk about why it hit home for me, not just, you know, what's in it. Um, yeah, I really appreciated that. Yeah. And uh, I, actually, the last time we talked about it, um, you have another. You have another one in the work, works now too. You're working on another book. Now? I've got another one finished. Oh, it's finished already. But, okay. But I'm trying to. I've been. I've been hustling for a preface uh, for ages, and hmm. all the people that I've asked have been too busy so far. Which and and it's been annoying because I've had to wait for them to get back to me or try and schedule various things and. Um, it's like so. I'm, I'm just uh, uh, maybe I'm saying too much at the moment. Actually, I don't know if I should even fuck it. Do you know what I mean? Whatever. <laughs> who, who the fuck gives a fuck what I say on a podcast? Do you know what I mean? Uh, but like, uh, so uh, the only re- yeah. So I'm just trying to. I'm. Uh, I've got a couple more people in mind. Um, that would be perfectly great it's not the fact that people are too busy that i mind it's like more like kind of like the waiting because i also kind of put getting onto the third project or anything like that sort of on hold because i'm like well i'm still doing the procrastination annihilation podcast tour and then after that i'll be doing the I'll be doing the the one for this book which is called universal basic income for and against so no doubt I'll be back with you on one show or another. Uh, I've made so many more contacts now that when that book comes out, I'll probably be hitting all of the libertarian shows again, trying to uh, raise my profile again. But um, it's like, I don't know. It's uh, It'll be interesting to see if people can take something different out of the book, each, each person, and if the interviews will be significantly different. I, I'm just because my idea with the Be Yourself and Love It podcast was to collect my media content in one place. So if I was doing self help media on other people's shows, I could upload them to the same live stream, sorry, the same stream as if I was interviewing the author of a self-help book or if I wanted to put a solo show up or if I'd done a YouTube live stream and I wanted to put it up so that, so that people could find all my content together. But of course doing all of these interviews on procrastination, it's like, I couldn't put all of them on, on be yourself and love it podcast. After a while people go, right. Okay. Are you going to cover anything except for the same stuff over and over again? (laughs) Although I, I would mention that if it is a problem that people suffer from a certain number of like listening to the there's a certain view from which you would listen you would benefit from listening to the interviews on that subject every so often it's always good to have a new interview on the subject every so often if you find the content useful because it refreshes your memory and keeps it in your mind to continue with your practice i didn't really have that notion before of listening to something or say reading something in order to keep me thinking about it. I used to think, I used to approach reading books like eating a meal or like an achievement. Oh, maybe if I finish this book, then I'll, I've got it inside me already and I can move on. I didn't think of life in terms of trying to get into the right state to do the kind of things that you want to do. And one of the things I suggest in the book is whatever you're into doing, like if you want to be an entrepreneur, 
read the biographies of successful entrepreneurs for a little bit every day. A few pages will do because it keeps it in your mind that that's where you're going to go if you want to be a rock musician. Read the biographies, Queen, Led Zeppelin, whoever you like, you know. Uh, and the point is not to finish the book. The point is to give you a thirst for that kind of life. So um, that so so in the same way i i don't know i'm just uh, shooting the breeze man that's that's quite all right no but that's it's i mean it is it is really good advice because you know I, I was actually the you know and i like the uh the analogy you started to make about the you know with the the, the eating a meal because that's that's kind of how i used to hand that's how i used to uh in you know in most of my media intake was like that it was like okay i've got it in me now moving on to the next and mm -hmm. especially for somebody like me who has always had difficulty because years ago i mean i'm talking like third grade i think uh, a group of a group of friends in mine were pulled out of the rest of the class and we were told that you know we were going to give the op given the opportunity to go in the gifted class and whatever and they taught us all how to speed read but unfortunately wow. unfortunately they never taught me how to undo it so my right. entire life, I have always spe like I, I speed read through everything, and I actually have to if I really want to retain the information I learned. I I actually have to slow myself down and read things multiple times or listen to things multiple times because yeah, I can cram all that information in, and but then if I move on a week later, two weeks later, I've forgotten half of it already because I'm I'm just piling new information. But like what you were saying, if if you're if you want to focus on something, it absolutely makes sense to do it a little at a time so it's always there in the, you know, it you're keeping it fresh rather than just burying it behind and moving on to the next thing because there there is only a certain amount of stuff that every human can retain in their mind at the same time. And uh, you know, and I also like the uh what you mentioned, you know, about reading like the biographies and stuff, because a lot of people, especially when it comes like, you know, the, the musician example you used, a lot of people would think, okay, yeah, I want to become a musician. Well, I got to study how to play music, how to read music, how to do all this stuff. It's like, yeah, you, those are those are definitely important, but trying getting to understand what other people went through is also a really big thing, and like you know, kind of like you know, learn. It's it's a way, at least in my opinion, you know, you can try to learn from their mistakes by doing stuff like that. You know, with the lifestyle I'm leading right now, the the whole, I mean, we we call it we're, we're, we jokingly call it vanarchy, because um, there's people all over the country and all over the world, from what I found, that are doing this that are literally out of vans. I have a much, you know, I have a smaller vehicle. I have my Honda Element, but you know. It's basically the same thing, but it's that's the type of attitude I'm taking. Like I'm trying to, pick, I'm picking the brains of other people <laughs> because I'm learning as I go. And it would be, uh, you know, if if I was just focused on the how to, um, I may, I, I I'd probably be successful ish. But I think I've already gained a lot more knowledge because I've not just picked up like the like the actual like physical stuff but i've also been picking the brains of people who have gone through this before and under and trying to understand wh where they were when you know why they did these things not necessarily because they had to you know the thought process and everything and i for me i find that extremely beneficial so i i can totally understand that um, right well you definitely don't sound out of your element tonight crash bang <laughs> yeah um but that's good man a good good and it's one of the wonders of the internet and it's really good attitude as well because some people try and reinvent the wheel and just figure it all out themselves and you don't realize the degree to which other people have knowledge and information that will help you like if you just go to them and ask and people will usually be quite willing to share because they they know what crap that they had to go through because they didn't know it and if they can put that to additional use by sharing it and giving someone else a shortcut that kind of adds meaning to their experience so i appreciate that yeah and uh well i was just gonna say especially uh in this particular you know my particular situation i i, I found that already like i've you know i put my content out there and uh i i, I like to use uh steam it as my uh as my launching point these days. So that's where all my stuff goes first. And then I put it out on YouTube and Facebook and all this stuff. But I've had a bunch of people actually reach out to me who just either stumbled across my stuff, stumbled across my content um, because of the hashtags that I'm using, or they happen to be fans of my other shows. And, you know, they just like, oh, you're doing this now? 
oh, oh my God, I've been doing this for years. This is amazing. And like they're reaching out to me and offering up this information. And it's to me, it's so beautiful. It's like, oh, thank you. Like, I'm like you know, I, I, as much as I like to be able to do things on my own, I was completely flying by the seat of my pants with this. And I knew that. Like I knew getting into this, and that's why when I started doing my vlog series, I tried to uh, I tried to impart on everybody over and over and over again. Like this is going to be a comedy of errors, guys. Like this is not me going out there going, "Oh, I got this covered. Don't worry, we're gonna you know this is gonna be awesome." It's like no, I have pretty much no idea what I'm doing, but I'm gonna figure it out along the way, and I'm going to the reason one of the reasons I'm documenting everything that I do is to be able to show other people my mistakes. So hopefully somebody else can learn from me as I've been learning from all these other people. So yeah, all that stuff is good. Um, the one thing I do want to mention, just because I'm looking at the clock and unfortunately um, we don't have as much time as I would like tonight, um, be it, uh, the, uh, you mentioned before uh, raising your profile, you know, trying to raise your profile again with the, the next round of books. And uh, I, 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 that phrase stuck with me because I, I saw you use it recently in a group Facebook message that you, that you invited me into and right. a bunch of other people. And uh, apparently right. there is something right. else that you plan on doing next week to help raise your profile as well. Uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Or are, we, are we keeping that secret or what's the deal? <laughs> no, that sounds like loads of fun. And people have tuned in the right time because if you're putting this out tonight, yes. they'll be able to attend yes. uh, a special episode of Scottish Liberty Podcast on uh, Thursday the 14th. Well, it'll be Friday the 15th if you live in Australia or anything like that. Um, I'm going to shave my head. My long hair, which I've had for 15 years, has got to go. The hairline recedeth unto eternity. <laughs> but more importantly than that, I'm going bald at the back and it's very noticeable. I never noticed it because I never get to see the back of my head in a mirror, do I? Oh. But it's kind of embarrassing uh, that I've been walking around with it. Um, well, do you know what? Fuck it. Who gives a fuck? Do you know what I mean? But it's like I've wanted to shave it off for... I keep on saying I'm going to do it, and I've kept on saying I was going to do it for about three years. So I just decided that it's high time, and it's sad because I like having long hair, but I also don't like it. And I've had it for my whole adult life. So, excuse me. So I wonder what my life would be like and how people would react differently to me if I had short hair. So I'm going to find out. So we're going to do a big event. It's not just for shaving my head. Well, I mean, that's the ultimate thing that's going to happen. But we thought it'd be great to get like as many libertarian podcasters together on the live stream. People will come in for five, ten minutes each or maybe longer. I don't know. It's going to be very free form. We want to hang out with our fans. So, so far, we've got lots of people confirmed Obviously, myself and Tom Laird from Scottish Liberty Podcast. Yourself, I believe you will be making an appearance. Yes, I am. Uh, as, as, as long as I can figure out how those time zone things work, I, I plan on being there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, we've got James Fox Higgins of The Rational Rise, Daniel Elwood and Robert Johnson of Actual Anarchy, Kyle Anzalone, who we met. From who we mentioned from Foreign Policy Focus, Scott Luffy of the Ancat Barber Shop, uh, yes, uh, Patrick McFar That's Patrick McFarlane of Liberty Weekly, Stephen Clyde, the Peace and Liberty Podcast, um, the lovely Sherry Voluntary <laughs> of the Sherry Voluntary Podcast, and uh, the delicious Emma Hobson of With Justice for Men and Boys and the Women Who Love Them, uh, Darren Dioji, friend of ours, he's been on. Um, Scottish Liberty podcast once and be yourself and love it, love it podcast once. He's he's got the YouTube channel Alternative Answers, and I'm sure there'll be other people as well. Uh, some people aren't confirmed. Those are the guests that are confirmed. But yeah, so we're going to chat with our fans, with your fans. Like I hope that people will come along and join the live stream, and it'll be our biggest uh, live audience yet. And uh, I hope that if anyone here is friends with me on Facebook. Do me a favor, right? Go on to the Facebook event uh, or message me personally and ask me if you don't know where to find it. And please go in and invite libertarians from our community because Facebook limits me to the number of people that I can invite. And if you guys can go on and like share the loads 
of inviting people to the event, then that would be really, really helpful. I'd love it if there was as many of us as possible on there and uh, we could have a really fun natter. Come in for the whole thing if you can for half an hour, 20 minutes, if, if that's all you can manage. Uh, we'll probably be live streaming for two hours, I guess, because... Um, because there's so many guests, do you know what I mean? And I think it'll be a really big laugh and we'll read out comments and, and stuff like that. So definitely come to the event. I'm sure, will you be able to put a note in the show notes for where, where yes. people can find it? Yeah, I'm going to put, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll throw everything, I'll throw whatever I can up in the show in the show notes. And uh, yeah, I actually, I have to check. I, tr- I tr- actually, when you mentioned that uh, yesterday about, you know, set, other people sending out the invites, I did attempt to, I tried to, I tried to invite my hundred limit. I'm not actually sure mm-hmm. if it went through though, because I was having issues with my internet yesterday, wherever I was. Um, but I'm going to check again tonight. And if it didn't go through, I will resend out those invites. So I make sure I get at least hundred of them there too um but yeah I, I mean i mean like you said this is kind of like you know a fun thing you're doing but i i, I really think this is uh i i loved it like i didn't get to follow the entire conversation in the uh in the chat only because i was running off my phone and i don't have the app so i have to use the mobile uh site which makes it very difficult to read messages because they only show you like three or four of them at a time um but as soon as as soon as i figured out what was going on i'm like this is this is wonderful because not only is it you know going to be a fun thing to do but i like the idea of bringing all of these shows yeah all these all these hosts together because like i yeah. know, i know some of them i've never even heard of some of the other ones and other like other people like you know you mentioned kyle anzalo like people like that like i want to get to talk to so i think this is an excellent yeah. opportunity on top of everything else besides to do something fun for our fans and stuff like that um but also for all of us to get together and kind of like you know get to know each other a little better and maybe make even more connections and uh you know who knows hopefully we'll after this we'll start seeing all of us on each other's shows left and right you know and, yeah uh, for sure just keep spreading because that's the, you know as we talked about earlier the uh, you know the market is kind of drenched at this point, but if you can stand out, or if you start forming these alliances that people you know work with each other, I mean that's how we built ourselves up originally with the Seeds of Liberty. We made friends with some other people who were just getting started out, and we kind of you know tried to like sh- share each other's stuff and kind of build help build each other up and like you know cross promote and stuff like that. And uh, in the long run, I think that does it that does nothing but help the cause of uh, the, the the cause of liberty and freedom uh if more of us get connected and more of us um you know j- j- aside from just like listening to each other shows and stuff what do you actually get to talk to each other and we get to have a laugh together right not just like a serious show because like you know people like kyle and stuff like that like they they talk about very serious subjects and they're very important subjects and i believe they, they're necessary to be talked about but when we can all get together and just like you know kick back and have a good time together i think it'll help you know just form a, a better bond and uh, I, i'm really looking forward to it yeah me too me too i'm really looking forward to it. um i don't know what's going to happen man it's just probably we're probably going to get a couple of beers as well and just uh, set with our live stream and just i don't know i mean there's no set topics so people can bring up anything they want and we can just have a chin wag and i love the idea of as many people as possible turning out and uh, having a chat with us because it's like you say it's a good opportunity for everyone to connect with everyone else and i think it'll be very funny yeah now I, I and now um, I'm I'm looking at the time. We're gonna we're gonna have to end this in, in a couple of minutes just because I'm gonna get kicked out of here because the people at the library were sure. nice enough to lend me their room for a little while. But um, now I, I do want to ask: Are are you going to be shaving your own head, or is Tom going to be shaving your head, or you got something? Tom's gonna. <laughs> Tom Tom is going to shave my head. I've allowed him to do the honors. I'm not going to shave it myself. Um, I think that maybe. I, I don't know. I just had a thought like this is the first time I put it out that after every guest, he can shave one streak through my head. So I get, <laughs> instead of doing it all at once so that I get kind of progressively balder as the night goes on, that seems like quite a fun idea. And I think I might roll with that. So I guess if you're going to chuck me off, I better just give the like, I don't like giving people a million links. So obviously there there will be the link to the Facebook event and the the YouTube live stream. But if anyone wants to hear more Anthony Samaroff, of course, the best way to do it is to download my free book, 
procrastination annihilation, which you can get from beyourselfandloveit.com forward slash do it. The reason why is the links to everything I do is in there, my self-help podcast, my libertarian podcast, and my YouTube channel, and anything else. All the links are just in that one link, beyourselfandloveit.com forward slash do it, and that will make it nice and easy for you to find me. Yes, and uh, I can attest, I, as I said, I've read the book and I found all the links there. And yes, you can absolutely find all that stuff. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll put obviously put that in the show notes too. I'll, I'll put the, uh, the link to the invite and all that stuff for the, uh, for the big event next week. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, like I said, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I, I, before we go though, because uh, you did put the one message in there about everybody make sure they know their time zones. I forget now, what time is it that right now for you? It's... Uh, right now it's uh, twenty to nine. Okay, that's right. All right, so we're we're five hours apart. That's what it is. Um, that's right. Yeah. So that'll be six thirty p.m. for you. Yes. Um, yes. Well, I, I yeah, will definitely so be there. And, uh, it's going to be a tricky for people who work and are in the west coast. But you can come to the second half, or you can just catch us for the last half an hour if you can't get all of that. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah, like I said, sure, it's it's, it's going to be a great time. And, uh, we'll. Uh, uh, it's gonna be so fun. It is, man. And uh, I, if if this is successful, I, I think we should we should try to do more of these. <laughs> I, I don't. Know. We'll have to come up with other ideas. I mean, maybe other people could shave their heads, but let's get creative and <laughs> let's just start doing these crazy live streams. <laughs> about, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Well, maybe. Well, maybe me starting will um, inspire some of the other people who come along to do a big meta live stream as well and get everyone together yes. well uh, hopefully and uh, yeah so we, we will see but alright so o- only because I have to go we're going to go but Anthony thank you so much for taking the time with me today man this was great I'm so glad we got to connect oh man Jeremy it's great I'm glad that we got to talk again and just shoot the breeze and talk about whatever was on our mind take care now yes. and enjoy Vanarchy. I, I, will, um, I will, sir. Uh, get, get, get back into your element. <laughs> yes, yes, I, uh, I definitely will. <laughs> well, all right. So once again, thanks, man. This has been great. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Great. This, thank you. This has Bye. been abolitionist abstractions. All of that, my information can be found at solpodcast.org or at steamit.com slash at abolitionistj. And uh, we will catch you next time. Love, peace, and voluntary interactions for all. My fellow sheep, election season is upon us. Are you one of the 12% of Americans who still approves of our government? Then we need your help to force the other 88% into compliance. Our democracy depends on it. We're an organization called Citizens Against Too Much Unfettered Freedom, or CATMUF. CATMUF is a bipartisan flock of sheep whose goal is expanding government until nothing else remains. Because the government is here to help you. How can you help CATMUF help you? by only voting for candidates dedicated to expanding government. It's easy. You don't need to study the issues. No matter what a politician says when running for office, they're all dedicated to expanding government. And make sure you tell all your friends and family to vote for more government. Here at CatMuff, we don't care if you vote Democrat or Republican, as long as you vote for candidates committed to growing our federal family. CatMuff. Because folks just aren't smart enough to handle real freedom.